Let's start out by clamping and squaring this rather long piece of stock, which obviously wouldn't fit in a vise. Clamping would be our only recourse. We'll assume we want to perform some operation on this scribe portion. Our first step would be to select two appropriate size studs and thread them into T-nuts. We'll then slide these assemblies into the slot behind the workpiece. Next, we'll select our step blocks and jaw blocks and set them in place on the stock. Now you'll notice that these step blocks are on the small side and they barely straddle the slot. That doesn't seem to offer a really trustworthy support. Now we could use larger step blocks, but I'd like to demonstrate a different technique. Rather than go to the large step blocks, we'll simply place a 1-2-3 block on the mill bed, which will bridge the slots and offer a solid foundation for the step block. You could use blocks of steel or even aluminum for this purpose too. If you imagine a line drawn directly downward from the junction of the jaw block and the step block, you'll see the clamping force is still directed solidly over the mill bed. We'll repeat this for the other clamp. For now, we'll just finger tighten both clamps. Next, we'll align the stock with the edge of the bed as close as we can by eye. Once we've done that, it's time to get accurate. We'll set up our test indicator. Mine is on a holder which is designed to go into the end mill holder and secure. We'll lower the spindle with the test indicator in it till the probe is lined up with the side of the stock. Then we're going to tilt our indicator so that only the end of the probe touches the stock. Since the probe on a test indicator swings back and forth, we want to be sure that only the end is touching and that the shaft is far enough away from the edge that any surface deformities or such will not mess up our reading. We'll start by preloading the indicator around 5 to 10 thousandths, and then we'll tighten our first clamp to about 75% of normal. The stock is going to move at first, so we'll wait till the clamp is tightened and the stock stops moving before we zero out our dial. Now we'll move to the second clamp. You'll notice the indicator needle moves as we crank the hand wheel. This is a combination of things. The first, surface irregularities can cause the reading to wobble. But also, play in the mill table, which we'll address in a later lesson, will show up here. The force of our cranking can easily move the table from side to side to take up any play that's in our jibs. We could expect to see that reflected on the indicator. So we're not going to concern ourselves with the wiggling of the indicator at this point. We're going to only be concerned with what the indicator reads when it comes to rest at the second clamp. Now the indicator tells us that the stock is off square to the bed a little bit. Since the clamp is loose, we'll just gently tap the stock with our wrench, taking care not to mar the surface. Then we can tighten our clamp. Now the stock is going to move a few thousands before the clamp completely tightens. Once the clamp bites, the stock usually does stop moving, so we can allow for that couple thousands drift. We do this by tightening the clamp, seeing how much the drift ended up being, then loosening the clamp and adjusting the stock to allow for that drift. Then we retighten. It takes a couple of tries, but it's not rocket science. You can see it's really pretty easy. And there we are, tightened and zeroed out. Our work's not done, though. Now we need to crank the bed back to our starting clamp. The reason being is, anything we do at this end could pivot the stock at the other and change the reading. Again, we're pretty much going to ignore any wobbly readings of our test indicator, and we'll wait till we get to our starting position before we take any reading seriously. Looks like our adjustments at the other end of the stock have caused a small shift at this end. Now, this is okay and it's easily fixed. We simply loosen the clamp and follow the same procedure that we outlined at the first clamp. A couple of tries will most likely get us right on the money. Tighten the clamp, observe how much it drifts. Loosen the clamp, and adjust for the drift. 
Tighten it again, check the drift, loosen it, make an adjustment. Tighten it again. Well, that looks pretty close. So we'll back it off and make another adjustment. And then we'll tighten it again. We've nailed it. The clamp is tightened and the indicator is reading zero. Now again, we need to check against the other clamp. While it's unlikely at this point, it is still possible that the stock may have shifted at the other end due to our adjustments. It's always better to be safe than sorry. So we'll crank back to the second clamp and we'll check our reading one more time. Looks like no more adjustments are needed. We're done. Now since our test indicator is accurate to a half thousandth of an inch and we've pegged the needle at zero at both ends, we can be pretty sure that our stock is squared relatively accurately to our spindle. Now obviously other factors are going to affect how accurate our finished product is, but without a true square starting position, we wouldn't have any chance at accuracy at all. Let's give the same procedure a try with some round stock. 